wants to fight us during the Charmony Festival? I'm afraid so. This is weird. Aren't Arc villains usually plotting some dirty conspiracy in the end? But he actually said something like, in all fairness. Could it be that he's underestimating us? Well, in my opinion, Sunday is deeply committed to his own philosophy and genuinely wants to prove that the Order is right. I sensed a strong conviction and a desire for dominance in him. Maybe he won't accept the outcome unless he wins fair and square. That's why he'll give it his all in the upcoming battle. Unchecked. This is about trailblazing a bright future for Panacone and fulfilling Mikhail's and his predecessors' long cherished wishes. Now that we've taken up the mantle, we can't afford to fail them. However, the same applies to the Order. Their plan didn't materialize overnight, and they have the profound collective consciousness of the planet of festivities behind them. desire to dream, to slumber and escape reality. All those hidden emotions have given birth to the sweet dream of the Order. They've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an Eon. This confrontation is far more complicated than a simple power struggle. To secure Penacone's future, Fighting on the stage alone is not enough. What do you mean? Are you not coming with us? I believe Firefly is trying to say that she's heading off to another battle. Mm-hmm. Before I left, the Destiny Slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. Because one of the lines said, I'll experience death three times in the land of the dreams. subsequent events. The script will always come true. But in a way that will only be revealed when that page is turned. So now I've understood the meaning of my second death. And I am prepared to face it. If all goes well, my efforts will provide crucial support for you. Only by achieving victory in this battle can we secure a future for Penacone. And only then, my third and final death won't come true in the most terrible form. The most terrible form? Does that mean... The true death, where everyone in Panacone loses themselves completely in the eternal sweet dream of the Order. We must do everything we can to prevent that. Have you made up your mind, Firefly? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. May we meet again, in reality. Yeah. Farewell, everyone. May your trail...
trailblazing expedition never end. I dreamed of a scorched earth. Everyone, are you ready? A new shoot mm. sprouted from the earth. It bloomed in the morning sun and whispered to me. Like fireflies to a flame. My feet is death. May we meet again in reality. After today, Chapella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not-too-distant future, you will receive an invitation. That's your next stop. The land of the dreams. Panacone. I... Hope you find whatever you seek there, be it answers or salvation. <laughs> you mean my three deaths? Silverwolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. Well, I want to live. I'm never afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal life, and that's... That's something I'll never desire. People die, and I am no exception. Death is like a script. A fate that cannot be defied. But that's exactly why... We have to choose where we want to rest forever. Do you exist just to perish? Are you not the same, Blade? The end you desire is not one dictated by others. If I were to die now, I would only be a weapon. I believe mission escapes me, isn't this the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? A name that can be carved onto their tombstone. A tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription, Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Then it changed to Stellaron Hunter. But one day, it will bear the name Firefly. And all the brilliance she showed at the end of her life. That's quite unexpected, old man. Who would have thought your crazy plan would actually work? Do all you nameless fools just act on a whim? I can sense that this false sweet dream is coming to an end. The nameless may be young, but they had the ability to achieve this goal. Just like you did in your time. It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. <laughs> Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, it ceases to exist. Yeah, not just those nameless. Even Mr. Wings is just like you. Stubborn, won't listen or give up, no matter what. Well, fate is unpredictable, I guess. If we weren't bound by those cursed paths, Maybe we could have had some good talks. But in the end, we managed to do it. And now we can find solace. 
Remember how those idiots cursed us? They said, go to hell, you worthless traitors. <laughs> well, I don't know if they really meant it, but if longing for freedom means going to hell, then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. Let's get together and have supper again in hell. Oh, I almost forgot. There's one more thing. Here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblazer. To the imperfect tomorrow. It's warm here, isn't it? You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain. Let alone fresh berries in this desolate place. I was just following the scent of life. It's particularly strong in a place like this. It's a shame these berries don't have much flavor. Seriously? In case you didn't know, this fruit is pretty juicy. The only downside is that when you chew it, it becomes extremely spicy. Have you lost your sense of taste? <clears throat> I can still taste certain things, like a faint sweetness. Before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed on my tongue, it tasted like raspberries. The flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but it left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that what's tying everything together isn't the big events, but rather these small yet unforgettable moments. Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self-annihilator must face. At least, I haven't completely lost my senses and memories yet. Well, congratulations on adding another footnote to your journey. By the way, are you always alone? No, I had a companion in Orkron. She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. <laughs> Quite an ambition for such a small girl. So, uh, what happened? She... became stagnant water. Well... My condolences. Condolences. I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice and most definitely wanted me to say goodbye with a smile. So, that's what I did. That's proof that you're grieving for her. Or, perhaps I'm just afraid. Afraid? I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her. Just like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain, disappearing into an unseen realm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. There isn't much color left. And besides this faint, warm red, there's almost nothing. Hard to imagine. A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction, and chaos finding warmth in the red color. Because I have experienced this warmth many times. 
Long ago, I promised someone that I'd bring it to more people. And that for every remaining moment of my life, I'd strive for... a better ending for all. As long as this red color still lingers, I have a chance to fulfill that promise. It represents a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave, and life itself, fleeting yet still dazzling. In the end, it will lead me beyond the horizon of existence. And on the other side, I will cut off nihility. <laughs> the one blessed by the sleeping and shapeless is considering how to kill them. That's truly pure nihility. But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire do I realize that I'm still alive. When will this rain ever stop? Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down, the sky will clear up. Have you heard of a planet named Biari Scamandros, Don Hung? It's one of the Paradise Kingdoms under the influence of the Harmony. A sought-after wonderland for the inhabitants of the Dardanu Major and Minor Systems. Half an amber era ago, the family held an unprecedented festival there. And after that, everyone on the planet became part of the family. Do you think the same thing will happen on Penacony? Yes. Or how else can we explain it? The family deliberately used the Watchmaker's invitation to keep all the Pathstriders here, but banished the Emanator of the Nihility. Because of the Nihility, I am rarely affected by the power of other Paths, but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. <laughs> Maybe that's the risk they're trying to avoid. I would disagree. Biori Scamandros is not part of the credit system or connected to the Silver Rail. It's nothing more than a remote civilization sheltered by the Harmony. But Panacone is different. If the family messes with Panacone, that would be like declaring war on almost half of the factions in the cosmos. They have no reason to do that. No, they don't. If they truly serve the Harmony, that is. What do you mean? The path in Panacone is impure. The Harmony here has impurities. Do you remember the ancient swarm disaster? Tazeroth, the propagation, brought endless havoc to the universe. And it eventually evolved into a fierce battle among all eons. Two paths lost their eons in that war. The Propagation and the Order. Coincidentally, their downfall is related to a certain eon. Shepe, the Harmony. Legend has it that they participated in the crusade against the Imperator Insectorum and devoured Anna the Order for unknown reasons. Holy Forgeroni! So you're saying that the two leaderless paths are working behind the scenes? But I don't see any descendants of the propagation in Penacone. Could it be that the remnants of Beyond the Sky Choir are hiding within the family, trying to resurrect a fallen Eon? I can't say for sure, but they're definitely planning something for the Charmony Festival. 
Th this is getting way too complicated. Is this why you want us to leave Astana right away? Are you giving up? The Charmony Festival will start soon. There's one thing that I need to confirm no matter what. A warp jump is the best way to do so. Time is running out. I have another plan. Hold on. Are you thinking of using the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath? Exactly. The assistance from the Lawful Cloud Knights would be enough. Think it over carefully. You can only use that once in your lifetime. I have considered it thoroughly. My companions are... They're also once-in-a-lifetime treasures. Are you the only one here, my child? The Nameless is quite the diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. And IPC starships are gathering towards Astana. This is a crucial moment for us. So, where is the chosen one who harmonizes the varied sound? What do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival. In our plan. But the plan has changed. As her brother, I... I know she doesn't want to sing for the Order. So I'll take her place. You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand the consequences of your choice. If you consider this a betrayal... Well, there can't be two suns in the sky. I'll step up and take down the other sun if necessary. Do you believe in karma? <laughs> if karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. <laughs> All right. Since you're willing to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. Why? You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. And one of you is destined to follow this path to the end. Is this part of your plan? Of course. You're still as clever as you were when you were a child. The opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the harmony and reveal your karma. I have one final question. Master, why did you choose to bring the Order to Penacony? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Why? It's for justice, my child. If we lose justice in our hearts, we will make the same mistake as the Harmony did. 
It's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron, but... Well, that's where our conversation ends. Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have dreamed of this moment too many times. <sighs> I shall ascend to the heavens. Becoming the scorching sun. Bathed in my light, my people shall flourish, while all evil shall be eradicated. This is the interior of the Penacone Grand Theater. to be flushed into the air by Soul Glad. But why is the venue still closed when the Charmony Festival is about to start? And not only that, the entire theater is eerily quiet. No audience, no staff, no one around. Yeah, I wonder how many tickets Hey, that's not what we should be concerned about. Let's explore around. Be careful, everyone. <laughs> this is hardly enough for a seat at the table. Are these puppets part of the stage setup? Even so, it's so eerie that the entire front hall is empty. no other grand theater in the dreamscape. Uh, so Sunday's messing with us? He said we'd have a final showdown on the stage, but why is there no one here? My apologies for the delay, March 7th. I'm waiting for you behind the curtain. Following the Asdana tradition, I invite you to enjoy a stage play in three acts before the festival begins. History is a mirror reflecting the universe's true essence. 
Let's use this opportunity to delve into the rich history of Penacony and the Eons. Within it, naturally, the future takes shape. Let us commence with the dawning of the world. After the Dusk Wars, darkness veiled the sky, and chaos consumed the Earth. Enna the Order emerged, destined to restore all existence. That marked the first day. Feeling lucky. They gathered nebulae and forged them into picks, thus creating a grand lyre with black and white keys. Strike the white keys, and the sun rose. Strike the black keys, and the moon rose. And so, the cycle of day and night arose. That marked the second day. so-called stage play is created with his abilities this act is named ode to prisoner given the atmosphere here i believe it's about pentagoni's past i thought things were finally looking up as i managed to dodge prison during my recent trailblazing expeditions but now it looks like i'll be back behind bars again I genuinely wish to avoid a violent clash with my esteemed guests from afar. Therefore, I've arranged three acts before the situation becomes irreparable. Where shall we start our narrative? Well, let's start with the time when Penacony was still a frontier prison. A prisoner named Hanun ignited a struggle for liberty and emerged triumphant. IPC referred to it as the War of the Frontier, while the Asdanians dubbed it the War of Independence.
agents and expelled the gods. It's true that Hanunu was a legendary hero, but it must be acknowledged that while he bestowed freedom upon the prisoners, he didn't grant them true liberation. Thank you for staying here, honorable travelers. However, the three nameless stayed on the planet, the endeavoring to spread no the tenets of Trailblaze throughout the frontier prison. Alas, their efforts <laughs> Again, as Donna was engulfed in war, this time the enemies originating from within. The prisoners remained prisoners for the rest of their lives, fighting for freedom rather than living for it. I hope you like this land of freedom. The scorched earth. As you can see, their sentences have long ended, and the IPC guards have long been expelled. Yet, these prisoners remain enslaved, not by external forces, but by the confines of their own minds. Freedom permeates every corner, except fragile souls. It gives solace only to those who believe in its existence. Prisoners, this is my order. Learn the essence of freedom and teach your fellow prisoners to fight for their lives. For I desire not only your enjoyment, but also your assistance in its completion. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off! Easy, Numbi! Liquidation! Oh. Target threat index lowered. away by the wind. Amidst a raging war, the Frontier Prison headed toward becoming Land of the Exiles. This must be how Panacone was constructed. With the aid of outsiders, the prisoners were finally liberated and established the Land of the Exiles. However, it appears that Sunday aims to convey the spiritual plight of the prisoners more than the physical aspects of imprisonment. This show is a bit too... literary for my taste. But the battle part is quite easy to understand. Anyway, we've arrived at the exit. Let's go! of stars into inked nibs, creating symbols to be pronounced and counted. They molded stardust into flowing rivers, assigning the righteous upstream and the unjust downstream. Thus, all things were marked, and the world learned to discern between good and evil. Marked the third and fourth days.
to fool. This must be the second act. The surroundings are different from before. Do the stage decorations look a bit tidier now? Behold the ensuing tale, a struggle for power. Penacone witnessed the ascent of the seven major lineages. Tree, grass, flower, bird, beast, fruit, and insect. Peace never truly graced land of the exiles. The history in this era is rich and intricate, so please allow me to present it in allegorical form. the exiles was in disarray, besieged by both internal and external perils. Though the seven major lineages appeared united on the surface, each harbored their own ambitions, leading to ceaseless conflict. desert event, orchestrated by the Alfalfa family. The leader of the Alfalfa family sought to defect to the IPC, trading freedom for survival. However, his eldest son slew him in the name of righteousness, and ascended as the new family head. Gopher Wood led the family to land of the exiles and earned recognition from all five major lineages. Did Panacone earn its new name? The Land of the Dreams. Dear outsider, I beseech your aid in purging this mansion of the poison spread by the lurking instigator. This is the second act. Looks like it's about Penacone's journey to becoming the land of the dreams, during which the family plays a crucial role. But this new master seems like a bad guy to me, don't you think? Perhaps this is the truth Sunday is trying to express, if you read between the lines. The harmony changed Penacone just as the guards once did. Master, I'm free. But without their guidance, 
for whom shall I sing? I shall sing for my new master, just as their noble voice once resonated throughout the cosmos. Master! Oh, you will return in due course, and I shall stand vigilant, awaiting the reward for my loyalty. Master, now that you have gone, I shall wait no longer for my reward. I shall seize what is rightfully mine. Once, I stood as the most loyal guard among all the servants. Now, with my master banished, it's my right to assume control of his dominion. My former master has long departed, but why do I still feel of his creation. The master is no longer here. I thought I'd be free, but I'm not. Now, without my master's command, I'll have to seek guidance from the blind. circumstances. Without a master, who can grant me true freedom? Thank you, dear outsiders. My servants have regained their sanity. Heed me, one and all. Your former master shall not return. It is through righteousness and unwavering support for one another that we shall attain true perfection. Cast aside the veils of hypocrisy and embrace one another. Get ready. Looks like another fight is about to begin. Till the very end, with the illusion of freedom. Thus concludes the second act. Amidst an illusory harmony, Land of the Exiles charted its course toward becoming the planet of festivities. This is how Peniconi fell under the family's control. Since the arrival of the Harmony, 
The land of the exiles has undergone dramatic changes, not all of which have proven beneficial. This guy really loves dramatic scenes. Bet he comes from a whole lineage of stage performers. rings to establish the law, forging a code of conduct among the masses. A grand lyre with black and white keys served as an instrument, while symbols of articulation and numerical notation took the form of musical notes. The downward flowing river became a melody, and the canon of law dictated the form. Thus, All mortals found their unique place within this symphony. That marked the fifth and sixth days. different from the previous two scenes. This is the concluding act of this play. I have showcased the past and present of Pentecost. This is the concluding act of this play. I have showcased the past and present of Pentecost. Hoping that my desire for change resonates within you. And now, I shall reveal its future to you.
Perhaps we'll need to complete the story ourselves, just like we did before. So, do you think their mind needs tinkering or something? for my negligence. I forgot to inform you that the final part was scripted long ago. Let our previous king recount it to you. Now it is time for the final rite. Prepare for battle. Looks like we'll have to fight again. This is the final scene. It's much more straightforward. He wants to expel the harmony and establish an empire based on the order. Let's go. Once this stage play concludes, it'll be time for the main event, the Charmony Festival. all things in the heavens and on earth. Then, they rested from the labors of creation. Yet, all beings cried out to Enna. Under the banner of the Order, you have defined all things in the cosmos. But this made us realize that we are but puppets in your hands. Thus, on that day, all beings united and cast the Eon into the abyss of oblivion. This grand theater looks totally different. Is this the power of the Order? Everyone, get ready. This could be a tough battle. That marked 
the seventh day. Cheers and chants reverberate the woods. That concludes everything related to the Order. What are your reflections on this, my dear guests? Nevertheless, this is but a trivial blip in the annals of galactic history. What truly matters is the course this river shall take in the days to come. You've arrived at the perfect moment. The Charmony Festival is about to commence. And it would be a shame if you were absent for the Harmony's prologue. Allow me to extend my warmest welcome once more. Welcome to Penacone Theater. The very core of the sweet dream. The abode of the Stellaron. The grand stage of the Charmony Festival. And the very place where the future of Penacone shall be determined through conflict. It hides behind the curtain. Or rather, it is the theater itself. However, if you want to see it, you must display faith equal to its immense power. True goodness can only be achieved through faith. Allow me to point out that falling into a permanent slumber is not happiness. Especially when those people are driven by someone else's will in their sleep. Do you still believe that the Order only seeks to control the universe as their puppet, Himeko? No matter how perfect your vision of paradise may be, a cage remains a cage. People will never achieve true happiness in a world like that. They would just be toys for the Eon. It seems you have misunderstood my intentions. Allow me to clarify. My desire is not to resurrect a fallen Eon or become one myself. My sole objective is to create a paradise free from eons, where the Order ensures the dignity and happiness of all humanity. A paradise exclusive to us human beings. That's not the case. If people are to live with dignity, there must be nothing and no one above them. In your so-called paradise, you would be the one reigning supreme. <laughs> Looks like we won't be able to convince each other. Now that our conflict has been destined, let's unveil our paths and reveal to the universe the true path. However, before the prelude to the future begins, please take a moment to ponder the questions I've posed. Is darkness equal to daylight? Are sinners equal to the righteous? If you are born weak, which god should you turn to for solace? Threat 
Research Index low. Hide. Some value. Sure, I'll play along. Watch your head. The market is on fire. Nice. Investing in victory. Who's playing the bomb game? The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Elegance. Existence is unity. Annihilation. I want to protect everyone. Help me, Mr. Star. Uh -huh. The risk, high reward. Limiter. Grace and elegance. Hedge your bets. Swept away by the wind. Spend freely. Easy, Numbi. <laughs> Watch your head. Watch your 
swept away by the wind. us shoot it down. In any case, since you remember what happened just now, well, that's put my mind at ease. Uh, it's a long story. Uh, simply put, Don Hung used the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath when we were in the middle of a fierce battle and summoned the General to help us just in time. And then, we return to reality. Look, this is your room. Everyone else has also returned from the dreamscape. Himeko and the rest are at the lobby discussing matters with the general. And now that you're awake, we should tell the crew that you're alright. Come with me. <laughs> Not going to come chat with me, sleepyhead. That voice... Is that Black Swan? <laughs> 